Hello everybody, my name is Claudia and welcome back to Chicken Star Rockets YouTube channel. Today we are playing Cemetery Mary. Uh, I don't know anything about this game, but if it's too scary, we probably won't be seeing this on our, um, on the upload. But if we are, then we're going to be doing just fine. Um, let's go to the about page. Dogum contains free software. Cool. Thanks, but guys, for letting me have this game. <laughs> Let me play in it. Uh-oh. Warning. This is your only warning. There's stalking, kidnapping, strong language, mild drug use, alcohol and smoking, blood, murder, suicide, flashing images, and potentially loud noises. Yikes. Discretion is advised. I've never been to a funeral that I didn't enjoy. What? <laughs> That's a way to start your, your game? That is, until very recently. And I wasn't quite sure how to feel. It was a beautiful service. And one they certainly deserved. If only it had come later in their lifetime. And maybe it could have been prevented. There wasn't a murder in my city. That's what everyone's been saying, anyways. The Blackwood Butcher, have you heard of him? That's what they called him, at least. It was hard not to overhear the rumors people said about him. I heard they strike at night. I heard they only target one person at a time and don't stop until they're dead. I heard it's a ghost blindly seeking revenge. I didn't believe in any of that. At least, not at first. But my parents did. And because of that, they didn't let me like me going off to the cemetery alone, staying until it closed, walking home by myself in the dark. See, I'm with your parents. That's how you get murdered, my friend. That's how you get dumb got. Even though it was only across the street, these rumors have made me dumb afraid for my safety. Do you really believe they're real? I asked my father. I do, he answered. Are you really worried for me? My mother did not say anything. But as to be expected, they thought I was a perfect target. But I still didn't believe in it. Still, they were worried about me. So they sent me off with my aunt, uncle, and cousin. They didn't live far. At least, not anymore. They moved from their fancy home in gorgeous Howland City to a small little cabin in the woods. I never understood why. But I never really asked about it either. My parents felt I would be safe with them. I didn't want to leave. But every day only I seemed I stayed only seemed to stress them out more. So I went to make them feel better. For the first two few weeks everything was fine. I barely left the house, barely went to town anymore. When I did, I was always with someone, taking all the precautions to avoid becoming a victim of the butcher. But I still thought it was only a rumor, even if the number of deaths in our community increased. I never thought that I or someone I knew would be a victim. Then that thing happened to those two, and for the first time, I was worried. Hmm. Shortly after that, my own parents disappeared. They weren't in the diner, nor could I contact them. Even the authorities couldn't figure it out. No one had seen them. It was as if they'd suddenly vanished. As if, as if they were killed off. I don't like to think about that possibility. Actually, well, there was also that other thing that happened. Hmm, maybe I should have told the authorities about it. Or anyone for that matter. But I was too afraid of what might happen if I did. Oh good, my parents are safe from the unknown number. Oh. Ah, uh, I knew I would fall asleep if I sat down. Is it raining outside? It wasn't supposed to rain today. I'm waiting for the twist that we're the villain. Is Croven out there? I better go check. Okay. We're gonna do that or turn. What are you doing out here? It's raining. I don't like your voice. I can see that it's raining, Mary. 
Quitmer, how does it feel? They went to heck. Outside. It's spaghetti. I used your favorite sauce, too. Okay, I'll be inside in just a second. So let me put this out. Yay! He kind of reminds me of Mothman, I don't know why. It's tall. Emo kid. Alright. All the food is cold. Are you upset with me for what I said earlier? No, I don't worry about it. It was just a slip up. You probably would have made the same mistake. So don't talk about it anymore, right? Okay. If you say so then. I'm really sorry, girl. Mary. What did I just say? We're not talking about it anymore. Okay. Other than that, we didn't say much and dinner was quiet. I cleaned up most of it, but Coven helped a little bit. After that, he went to go sit in the living room. Once I finished cleaning the kitchen up, I joined him, like usual. Normally after dinner, when Coven and I sit here together, we do something fun. We play a game on our phones together, we get out a board game, or we play cards. We talk about our days if something exciting happened, but that's when not an uncle or still. Coven's been in a pretty bad mood since, uh, it's not as if I could blame him. But I want to talk to him, but I don't really know if he's much in the mood to talk. What should I do? Attempt a conversation. Crow, do you want to talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. I still got my old therapist number, you know. Crowvin? Ain't there a reason she was your old one? I know. But she was good at this kind of stuff. And I've been thinking that maybe... Shut up, Mary. Shut up already. Can't I be better over it? Why are you trying so hard to rush me into therapy, huh? Thought you knew about this crap any better than anyone. But here you are. I'm not going to stop being upset just because you miss me being all happy, smiling and stuff. Can't you just stop trying to talk to me? Trying to talk to me about it? I'll get over it when I get over it. Maybe. Get your own life. And then you'll stop worrying so much over mine. Sorry, I'm only trying to help. Hmm. I think I ended up making Crowvin more agitated trying to talk to him. Oh well. I don't regret trying to talk to you. After a few moments of awkward sitting, I went upstairs and headed to my bedroom. I didn't want to make Crowvin angrier than I had already. I brushed my teeth and got changed to my pajamas. I stretched out on what you could consider my bed. The room I have in the cabin is nice. It's not like my room back in my actual home. But I've stayed here so long I've kind of been able to decorate it a bit more to my liking. It's a pleasant room to stay in, even though it's not quite home. Of course, I don't normally sleep right away. I usually read a book or watch a movie on my laptop or lie awake thinking of every embarrassing thing that's ever happened in my life. But as of recent, I picked up a different nighttime ritual. One that's nowhere near as pleasant. Oh yeah? The text message I received the days following my parents' disappearance. It was from a number I didn't recognize. Your parents are safe, they had said. I knew I should have done something smart. I should have told somebody. But instead, I texted the number back. And they responded to me. I've noticed that other than the first message, they usually don't reach out to me. It's me who keeps texting them, hoping to find out what's happening behind all this. Are you still awake? I am awake whenever you want to talk. Are my parents still alright? Yes. I am keeping a careful eye on them. How can I be even sure how can I be so sure that you even have them? What if you're just trying to prank me? Why would I do that? Because I'm hoping it's a prank. I'm sorry, it isn't a prank. I can promise that it, it's all real. Kidnapping and stalking. What did, what did we say at the beginning? Discussion of advice. How did you even get my number? Your parents gave it to me. Why would they do that? Because they care about you. You must be lying to me. My parents wouldn't do something like that. I'm sorry, you don't know your parents as well as you think you do. What does that mean? Seriously, <laughs> you freak me out. I just want my parents back. Please, don't drag this out. I just want them back home. You should get some rest. 
It's late, isn't it? I'll talk to you tomorrow. I don't like to text for too long. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. It's your best to get some rest. But how do I expect me to do that? I never had more restless in my I've never felt more restless in my life. Even asleep. I knew I wouldn't rest. <clears throat> when I woke up the next morning, Crowan had already left for the day. That wasn't a surprise. He had been staying out late and leaving super early ever since the incident. I think being home bothers him. I'm not surprised. Whenever I pass the diner, I too feel like not being there. It's not the same without Mama or and Dad, after all. Despite this cabin being out in the middle of the woods, it really isn't all that hard to get back to Blackwood. I see, I see this design pattern and I think that she's a doll. I don't know if that's on purpose or... Hmm. Outside of our cabin is a faint dirt trail. It gets a bit twisty at some parts, but isn't too confusing. It takes out about 15 minutes to walk down, but maybe 18 if you're fast. At the end of the trail, there's a fence. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. One with a slight gap in it. And beyond that fence, there's a little community. Are you the stalker? <clears throat> it isn't big. A few trailers with a few people living all the way out here. Far from anything that's, well, anything. But there's a road here and a bus that comes through. It runs through Blackwood. So whenever we need to leave, we take this bus. And then, after all, at the end of that short trip, you're in Blackwood. It's a city I grew up in, and I always really loved it. There's the library and the local stores. And my most favorite place to be is the Blackwood Cemetery. It's got lots of trees to read on there, and the prettiest headstones I've ever seen. There's a mausoleum, too, though I've never been inside. Private mausoleum, you know. I don't know who it belongs to. I bet that's where your parents are. Anyways, I always try to leave flowers when I visit, at least every so often. And I visit a lot. I like to think it helps them, you know? Not feel lonely. That's sweet of you. And then after having spent my day in Blackwood, I come back home the same way I left. But I always make sure no one sees the way I come back home. Just in case, you know. I keep doing that thing, I'm so sorry. <sighs> hmm. Despite the recent events, I too leave the cabin more than ever now. Crowbin is rarely home and I don't like being there alone. I know I'm just being paranoid, but I don't like the thought that maybe the butcher could find me out here all alone. Even if it, that's the whole reason I'm here in the first place. So I go on a lot now. I feel more comfortable surrounded by lots of people. Despite how things may seem, I always prefer to be around people anyways. That's one reason why I like to go to the cemetery so often. There's always people there, even if you can't see them. Oh my goodness. Mm. Even if you can't see them. After I got out of bed, I made myself a small breakfast and got changed into my favorite outfit. Is this one? groban has gone and the bus I take out to into town should be arriving any minute now. Where should I go today? Um, let's go to the library. I decided to go to the library. There's nothing quite like a good book. My favorite kind of books are mysteries. Me too, fam. Not necessarily murder mysteries, but mysteries in general. In fact, I kind of prefer it when mysteries don't involve anyone dying. There's a lot less tension there, you know? But maybe I'm just too soft. Hmm. I also quite enjoy manga, especially the shoujo kind. I feel almost embarrassed to like them, but I find that they're cute and nice. I like seeing characters fall in love. I feel that. Yeah, a shoujo. Maybe that's what I'll try to find at the library today. I stepped into the library and began to make my way over to my favorite spot. I tucked away a corner of the library right by a single window. Sometimes I'd spend an extra day in that corner just reading. I think I managed to finish an entire book without leaving the library. I look forward to doing some to doing something like that again today, but 
Why, that's my favorite spot. I know some animals are always sitting there. I'm super surprised because usually this library was pretty empty. But this man, he's familiar. Okay, I don't know what this chicken is, but I'm sure it's a reference to something. I've met him before. I don't like your voice either. Oh, my apologies. Did I take your seat? Oh, it's you. Mary. Mary Anto, yes? Ah, uh, that's right. I remember you. My goodness. From the funeral, right? Indeed. Do you remember my name? Earl Reginald? That's right. It's a pleasure to see you here. I was hoping I'd run into you again one day. Oh? Uh, I hope that doesn't come off weird. You were just such a pleasant person to be around. You really brought life into that funeral. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, th thank you, I, I think. <laughs> so what brings you to the library today? Um, uh, well, I don't really have any plans. I, I just thought I'd check out a book or something. Likewise. What kind of book were you interested in checking out? We'll be honest. Shoujo. Um, uh, I'm actually here to look for a shoujo manga. A shoujo manga? What's that? Oh, um, it's like a... Do you know what a manga is? I have an idea, but I can't say I've ever read one myself. Well, well, it's like one of those, uh, but it usually centers around the romance between the two main characters. And sometimes there's, like, friends or rivals, but, but, but I really like the comedy ones. Because you get cute jokes mixed into the romance, and, uh, but, but sometimes the drama ones get really cute, too, and they can really get really intense, and, <laughs> sorry, I'm rambling. I'm not good at explaining things. No worries, I think you did a great job. A shoujo. Sounds interesting. Perhaps I'll check one out myself later. I'm trying to be more open to new things, after all. Uh, anyway, what are you here to read? Me? I'm reading Manslaughter and the Disoriented Locomotive. Oh, really? That sounds like Murder on the Orient Express, sir. Oh! I have a meaning to read that one, too. Do you want it, then? What? Oh, no, no. That's okay. Uh, please, take your time. Just, uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you tell me what you're done, when you're done with it? No, so I can maybe read it after? I'm fine with that. No, I've already gotten pretty far in, and I don't think I'll be finished by today. You have a cell phone, yes? Would it be alright if I have your number? That way I can notify you as soon as I'm finished. And, well, I'd like to try to be friends, too, if that's alright. Oh, really? I, I mean, uh, yes, of course. You exchanged his phone numbers with Reginald. I was shocked he even remembered me. Reginald's a stalker, isn't he? See, it now I'm paranoid because of the warning at the beginning of the of the of the game, saying that we're gonna have more scenes. Now I'm paranoid that everyone we run into you is either the murderer or the stalker, and it doesn't bode well for any of the characters in this video game if they're actually friendly. You gave that warning, now I'm thinking, oh boy, is everyone in this game out to get me? Like, I don't even trust my cousin Crovin. He seems sketchy as all heck. <laughs> he seems sketch. Well, I guess we're gonna do this. But I consider meeting him again as a pleasant surprise, and one I really appreciated. After exchange, I picked out a shoujo book from one of the shelves and began to read it in, in one of the other spots in the library. I ended up liking it so much, I looked I looked for the other books and brought two or three home with me to read later. Hmm. After I came home, had dinner, and cleaned the kitchen up, I began my usual nighttime routine. I got exchanged into pajamas, brushed my teeth, sat on my bed, and texted whoever they are. See, I'm also curious. Oh, hi, it's me again. I'm also curious about uh, like if we go around collecting phone numbers of other people, if we'll eventually find a match to whoever is this mysterious phone number. Um. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea that she's giving out her, her phone number to random people. I'm very cautious about who I give out my phone number to. Um, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. It's also kind of hard, because, like, if this is taking place during the 80s, okay, yeah. But this seems to be taking place during, like, 
modern day? I don't know. I don't know. Also, I'd really like to know why you have a, a skull in your room. And I don't know if this poster changed, but it feels like it did. Also, I feel like this is a reference to something, but I don't know what it is. Also, I don't know why we'd be creeped out by this. I don't know. There's so many things. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Huh. Um. Excuse me. Pardon me. No. I, I didn't see what they looked at. Can I ask you something? If you don't, if you won't give me an honest answer anyways. Okay. Are you the Blackwood Butcher? Would I tell you if I was? Um. Oops. Are you afraid for their? Are you afraid for their safety? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? I see. Um. Should I be afraid for my own safety if I'm texting you? Who am I to tell you what you should and shouldn't be afraid of? Your fears are your own to judge. You're way too vague. Why'd you even contact me to begin with? I thought you'd like to know about your parents. I'm only trying my best to keep you happy. You think I'm happy? Maybe not now, but you will be. I have to go now. Goodbye. Goodbye. After another frustrating and unsettling night of text messages, I got under the covers and tried my best to fall asleep. It wasn't easy, and I had a lot of difficulty trying. I don't remember exactly when, but eventually I was able to sleep, even if not peacefully. Dad? No. Oh. Oh, we're in a flashback. Her hair's longer. It's really cute long. Yes, sweetheart. Um. Yes. Is something wrong? Mama told me that Uncle Ray died. Did she know? Are we going to go see him? No, no. You don't need to worry about that. I don't? But... Listen, Mary. Normally when someone passes... You hold a funeral for them, right? Yeah. The thing about funerals, though, is that they're for people who are worth remembering. Huh? Oh, I feel like we're gonna get a scary, a spooky. I don't like spookies. No! <laughs> Just gonna close my eyes preemptively. Take off my headphones real quick so I don't have to hear whatever noises we're gonna hear. Don't give me spooks! I'm not here for it. Okay. No spooks. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> I don't like spookies. <laughs> I get too scared. Uh, <laughs> oh no. After I got out of bed, I made myself a small breakfast and got changed to my favorite outfit. Crowen's gone, and the bus I take in town should be arriving any minute now. What sh where should I go today? Let's go to the cafe today. Because I'm an explorer player who likes to explore the world. I decided to go to the new cafe that opened up. Planet Dollars. Ah, it's a popular coffee chain, but we've never had one in this town. Well, until now, that is. I've always wanted to go to one, just to try it, you know? Although, I don't actually like coffee. <laughs> but still, I could at least see what they had, right? When I got to the cafe, I, I, it was already packed. Yep, can't wait to see what, what it's got. I thought since it had already been around for a few weeks, some of the hype surrounding it would have died down. But I guess not, seeing how, many, how noisy and crowded it was. Still, at least it was something different than eat from usual. As I said, I'm not particularly fond of coffee. But since I had a light breakfast anyways, I decided to treat myself with a muffin. A chocolate muffin. Because sweets food are the best. However, I found myself in a bit of a pinch when I tried to look for some place to sit down. It seemed as though everyone's seats were already taken, and I really didn't want to walk and eat at the same time. Luckily, though, I was able to find an empty seat. A girl around my age with the most spectacular eyebrows was diligently working on her laptop with an empty seat across from her. I figured she must be writing an essay for college or something. Coffee shops are popular with people in college, or so here. Confirmed, they are. Seeing as this was the only seat left, I asked her. Can I sit down? Excuse me, may, may I sit here? She didn't verbally answer me. Rather, she glanced over at me, rolled her eyes, and nodded to the empty chair. I tried to look apologetic as I sat. Thank you. Um, what are you working on? Sorry, can you shut up for a second? I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I help you with anything? Not now, I'm fine. Um, okay. You're the 
the most spectacular Thank eyebrows. Thanks. Oh. So you're interested in what I'm doing here? Well, yeah, I guess. You seem to be very focused after all. As focused as I can be. With you talking. What's your name? Me? I'm Mary. Twyla, nice to meet you. Anyway, I'm working on a report. A report? Like for school? No. Have you noticed something odd going around? Going on? In town recently? Sorry. Something odd? I'm not surprised if you haven't heard about it. It's like the police are trying to deal suspicious. Or just arrest potential suspects so everyone can feel safe. Oh, oh, are you talking about killing rumors? The Blackwood Butcher, right? Don't say it so loud. But, yes, how did you know? Oh, well, uh, I've, I've been hearing rumors for a while now. And actually, my aunt and uncle died pretty recently. They were, um, killed. Really? Uh-huh. That's actually pretty. Uh, how did they die? Oh, uh, I didn't, I don't know. No one really told me, but, uh, the circumstances were, uh, strange. Like, shoot. And they didn't die naturally. There was definitely someone else involved. At least that's what I've been told. Uh-huh. Interesting. You know, maybe you can help me with this report. And, uh, some other stuff. Oh, I can? Yeah. If you're okay with that, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, having a killer run is so bad. So if I can help, like, raise awareness or something. I mean, like, uh, yes. <laughs> I'd like to help you, uh... Thanks. This will really put me ahead. Mm. I have to go, actually. I'm running late for something. Here, give me your phone number. I'm not entirely sure I'll need your help, but I'd rather have a way to contact you just in case. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Mm. Twill and I exchanged phone numbers. After she grabbed up her laptop, it was practically blah, blah, blah. Come to think of it, I did not actually see her drinking coffee or order any food. Rude. That's coffee shop 101. You're supposed to, like, I don't know. Rude. Oh, a big stretch. Every time it fades to black, I'm scared that we're going to get a, a scary. And like I've said, I do not like the scaries. The spookies. I don't like them. I guess maybe she finished before I got there. I don't know why she would choose such a noisy place to work, though. After spending my day looking at some nearby stores, I went home pretty tired. I ate leftovers for dinner and yawned more. Then once I, as I, then once as I got changed into pajamas, I plopped myself onto my bed and pulled out my phone, ready to continue the nightly conversation. Do you keep looking to see if any of this is changing? It's not. You're there, right? Of course I am. Of course I am. I don't know why I keep contacting you. I guess I'm just afraid if I don't, you'll disappear or something. It's unlikely. I know you won't tell me where my parents are, but can you at least tell me why you took them? No. Why not? I don't know who could be seeking, seeing these messages. Are you worried about the, being traced? Possibly. I may even change phones from time to time. Just be careful, but you'll know it's me. I don't know if that could, should be comforting or not. I really don't like, don't see how this works. How am I supposed to trust you or someone dangerous if you don't give me any info to go off of? Especially when I haven't even heard from my parents. Goodbye, Mary. Sleep well. I don't like that he knows your name. She? I don't know. I don't like that they like th that they know your name. You probably told them your name. I felt sick that night as I tried to go to sleep. I tossed and turned so many times, and yet I was still too tired to get up and try doing something else. I don't remember when, but eventually I was able to fall asleep. I didn't sleep very well, though. <sighs> I'm not going back out there. You, you. Oh. You saw how they were looking at me. I can't do it. I can't. There, there, honey. I'm sorry. I just... Maybe it's better if I don't anymore. Yo, Mary, what happened to you, buddy? Okay, got changed my favorite outfit. Time to go to town. 
But maybe we're going to save that for next time. So we're going to quick save real quick. Oops. Quick save. There we go. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.